Hello friends, welcome to second part. So in second part, we are starting with our DNA technology. So R here stands for recombinant DNA technology. So what exactly is a recombinant DNA technology is that? Now there is an host cell. Okay. Now this is something called as plasmid okay so what is a plasmid a plasmid is nothing but extra chromosomal dna it is a circular piece of a dna which is pre present in a microbe okay now recombinant is where i'm removing the unwanted gene in this plasmid so i'm removing the unwanted gene and in this specific place now what happens when i remove this unwanted gene my plasmid kind of looks like this isn't it so here i insert my desired gene okay my desired gene as i told in part one for example a b one gene which is responsible for pest resistance in microbes okay desired gene so that is what you call it to be as recombinant dna technology so the process of joining and inserting a foreign piece of DNA. This AB1 is a foreign piece of DNA where it has been inserted into a host organism. Now, who is a host organism? This microbe which consists of plasmid to produce new genetic combinations and now there is a new genetic combination isn't it this is a kind of new genetic combination now this new genetic combination is called as recombinant dna technology okay now the first recombinant dna technology the first r dna it was produced by whom it was produced by stanley cohen and herbert boyer in the year 1972 so in the year 1972 mr stanley cohen and herbert boyer what did they do they produce the first recombinant dna technology so what did they actually do they isolated an antibiotic resistant gene okay so what do we mean by antibiotic resistance gene so now this specific substance is able to grow even in the presence of an antibiotic is called as antibiotic resistant gene okay when a specific microbial organism or when a specific dna which is able to metabolize which is able to synthesize itself even in the presence of this antibiotic you call it to be as antibiotic resistant gene okay so now that's a piece of dna from a plasmid so now they have isolated this antibiotic resistant gene where in a plasmid the plasmid of salmonella typhimurium okay now it was linked with a plasmid vector and transferred into e coli now what am i doing this plasmid i am transferring or inserting into a cell that cell is nothing but escherichia coli cell e coli cell okay now what happens when this e coli undergoes its binary fission the same gene of interest along with the plasmid gets on replicating so that's how the progeny is been produced okay now this specific technique is called as r dna technology okay so what is r dna technology it is nothing but the introduction of a foreign gene into an organism and such thing is called as recombinant dna technology now we are talking about the tools the various tools of our recombinant DNA technology. Now, what are the various tools of recombinant DNA technology is that 
the first tool is called as restriction enzymes now these restriction enzymes are called as molecular scissors so as the word says molecular scissors what does a scissor do the function of a scissor is to cut isn't it so the same way these molecular scissors they helping in cutting off a dna segment okay for example if this is a dna segment these molecular scissors tend to cut in between the dna segments and that is what you call it to be as restriction enzymes okay so now these are the enzymes which cut the dna at specific site so i will tell you what is a specific site for example there is g a a t t c okay you would have studied this in molecular biology chapter isn't it molecular basis of inheritance for example the complementary base pair of g is c the complementary base pair of a is t so c t t a a g now what happens there is a restriction enzyme called as eco r1 okay now what does this eco r1 does it it makes a cut in between g and a of g a a t t c segment okay now here in between g and a so this isolates this way and this isolates towards the left and this isolates towards the right and this isolates towards the left now look at this this is isolating here this tends to isolate here and this other part isolate here and this isolates here so they belong to the class of enzymes called as nucleases there are n number of restriction enzymes or molecular scissors we tend to call them as endonucleases and exonucleases they are divided into two important things one is endonucleases and the other is exonucleases okay so what do they do so they are all the enzymes what do these enzymes do they cut the dna at a specific site into fragments all right now next in the year 1963 so in the year 1963 what has happened two enzymes are responsible for restricting the growth growth of bacteriophage what is a bacteriophage bacteriophage is a phenomena where a virus is infecting a bacteria okay now this bacteria which consist of the virus infecting itself is called as a bacteriophage okay now two enzymes responsible for restricting the growth of bacteriophage in e coli okay they isolated it okay one enzyme added methyl groups of dna so in chemistry you must have studied what is a methyl group so in the comment i want you to uh text the what is the common methyl group okay for example c o h r dash there are a lot of groups isn't it so i want you to comment what is a methyl group let's see who is commenting it now the other to cut the dna so now what did they isolate they isolate two important things the first one they isolated is the methyl groups of a dna and the other they isolated its is a restriction endonuclease okay now there were more than 900 restriction enzymes we have been isolated from 230 strains 230 different species of a bacteria okay so in the year 1963 two enzymes were responsible for restricting the growth of a bacteriophage in e coli were isolated one enzyme added methyl groups to dna the other the restriction endonuclease so more than 900 restriction endonuclease has been isolated from 230 strains now next we'll talk about its nomenclature 
how do they actually signify now for example we have e o r 1 okay the first letter indicates is genus so the first letter indicates esterichia okay so esterichia first letter is the genus the second two letter indicates the species can you see the second two letters which is indicating the species which is coli so the first indicating the genus and the second indicating the coli okay now then what happens the r1 indicates the type of restriction enzyme this is restriction enzyme type 1 okay all right so that's what you call it to be as r1 so e is its genus name the next two letters is its species name and r1 the restriction one is the order from which it is found out okay now next we'll talk about exonucleases and endonucleases now if there is a dna segment okay say there is all the base pairs exonucleases are those which cut the dna segments towards its end okay so toward when they cut towards their end you call it to be exonucleases what is endonucleases when they cut the dna in between now see there is a huge difference between this and this isn't it there's is a huge difference because exonucleases cuts towards the end but the endonucleases it cuts in between okay so that's what you call it to be that's the major difference between exonucleases and endonucleases now this is a very important one mark question it has been asked in neat exam also once the first restriction endonuclease which was found is hind2 okay hind h stands for hemophilus i end stands for influenza so it was isolated from hemophilus influenza virus uh, bacteria okay so hemophilus influenza so it cuts the dna by recognizing a specific sequence of six base pairs okay so it cuts the dna by recognizing a specific sequence of six base pairs okay now six base pairs one two three four five six and here also they have the complementary base pairs of six okay now such six base pairs now this six base pairs is called as recognition sequence all right now this six base pairs is called as recognition sequence so now it cuts the dna by recognizing a specific sequence of six base pairs and this is called as what the recognition sequence of hint two now can you see here now this is called as can you see now here straight away in between they are cutting so this kind is called as blunt ends okay because see there is a g c t t c g a okay now in between they are cutting equally isn't it this side also there is two base pairs this side also there is two base pairs so they are cutting equally so such things are called as blunt ends okay they are, they are called as blunt ends then what is a sticky end now listen to bam h1 g g a t c c c c t a g g now where are they cutting they are cutting on to the first base pair where in between g and g now what is happening it is unequal isn't it so whenever the cut is unequal such ends are called to be as sticky ends okay whenever it is unequal such things are called as sticky ends okay now blunt ends sticky ends so blunt ends is where when they cut equally 
sticky ends is where when they cut unequally okay blunt always remember when there is equal amount of base pairs on to both of the sides that's called as blunt end when there is unequal amount of base pairs on to both sides that's called as sticky ends okay is so now here alu1 h3 they produce blunt ends these are all the examples now bam h1 hin3 eco r1 they produce sticky ends all this you could expect in a one mark question okay now there is something called as palindromic nucleotide sequences so you might have come across palindromic uh, words isn't it like i want you to comment the different palindromic words okay so you can surf through the net and find different palindromic words so what exactly is palindromic is that it means or <clears throat> the pronunciation is same when you tend to read it from left to right or right to left okay now the restriction endonuclease recognizes a specific palindromic sequences either from 5 prime n to 3 prime n or from 3 prime n to 5 prime n can you see here g a a t t c from 5 prime n okay from this side also it is g a a t t c so now when you read it from left to right or right to left it's all the same the base pairs are all the same so such base pairs is called as a palindromic nucleotide sequence okay so as i told you a sticky end so what is sticky end when there is a cut g a a t t c a a t t c now what happens when they make a cut over here here it is unequal isn't it so such unequal things are called as sticky ends okay so there is a overhang okay you call it to be it's hanging isn't it this side is also hanging this side is also hanging there's a overhang so that's what you call it to be as sticky ends can you can you see there is an overhang here when it cuts this way those are called as sticky ends so a very fortunate example of overhanging is eco r1 all right so now in this session we actually studied about the various restriction tools the various tools we studied about the various tools of our dna technology so there are nearly n number of tools where we have studied only little okay very few amount of tools so i want you to gather up a lot of wisdom a lot of knowledge in finding out what are the other tools and commenting below in the comment section so i'll meet you up there in the third part thank you